The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis, from a very cold day in the old desert Pueblo. 28 degrees in Tucson, folks. That's colder than the East Coast. I guess I'll be moving out here for warmer weather into the Philadelphia area. We got a little baby coming. 161 days, another little bouncing boy. And speaking of bouncing, we're going to take a look at this DAX index. It's trying to bounce off the bottom. Uh, it's got a nice three-drive pattern there. If it's going to hold, we'll have to wait and see. Personally, I think it is, but, you know, that's just my opinion, and we know what opinions are. If we take a look at the next one, which is the FTSE, uh, we'll take a look at that here, and we'll, <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be taking a look. By the way, remember, five days from today, folks, is one of the most important days of the year. That's the birthday of the Duke, the king of rock and roll, Mr. Elvis Aaron Presley. One of the big disappointments in my life, folks, is when I went to Memphis to see Graceland and how small Graceland was as a mansion. He paid a hundred grand for it, I believe, in 1955 or 56, which was a lot of money, and it was a big mansion. But boy, can but square footage-wise, it was really small. Of course, they added on to it with all the shops and the radio station and the museum and all the other stuff. But uh, at the time, it was a rather small mansion. I think it was around 4,000 square feet, which uh, I know people in the den here have houses bigger than that. Anyway, let's uh, let's take a look here. We've got something really big happening in these currency markets. And I wanted to just give you my two cents worth, and believe me, this is my two cents. And sometimes that's uh, you know all it's worth. But this is what I'm going to try to uh, you know give you as a um, at least an idea uh, of what I think some of these things are doing. The main one that I want to watch for is the. Uh, the fact that the uh, New York, uh, let's do the currencies folks. I'm trying to get these lined up so I'm able to see it. Here's the one I want to show you. This is the biggest bank robbery of all, and nobody did anything about it. Hold on one second here. This is the uh, take a look at this. This is the Swiss franc. If you remember back in January of 2015, right in the middle of the session, the Swiss bank decided the Swiss banking. The, they're uh, one of the major banks, whatever it was. I don't know which one it was. It might have been a consortium of them, but they decided to no longer uh, take the euro. Uh, I believe it was something like that, but you can see what happened to the dollar Swiss. It just dropped. It, folks, that was a $20,000 drop in one day. And of course, the uh, it came right back within a matter of about, uh, what? Uh, I think about four or five hours, it got back to nearly where it was before, but it wiped out uh, several Forex banks, the smaller ones. FXCM uh, basically, you know, had to take a hit from, I think, $24 a share down to $5 a share. Uh, gain capital was also smashed really bad. Um, GFT was also hit really bad. And uh, it was just a, uh, you know, it was really, really bad. And, and and they get away with this because, you know what, they give them a fine. Sure, yeah, they make a $2 billion on the trade and they find them $100 million. But they don't put them in jail. You put them in jail, then they'll think about it. Look at, look what, uh, uh, anyway, you could just look at the fines that J.P. Morgan paid over the last few years and nobody goes to jail. They break the law and don't go to jail. Now, that's, uh, I guess that's banking and politics. What are you going to do? <clears throat> All right, let's uh, move on to where we are here. The big thing started as near as I can tell, and believe me, I'm giving you my two cents worth because I think this is what actually occurred, but I'm not 100% sure. So what I would like for you to do is to uh, take a look here uh, at the uh, – uh, well, let's just get it right here. Hope we can get it uh, – that's not the one I wanted. Ah, oh, shucks, Larry. Oh, shut the front door and raise the rent. You know, I I, I I mark these as one, two, three, four, and five. And ah, oh, here we go. There we go. Here's well, here's here's where we were. Here's where we were before all this stuff happened. Take a look here. 
you'll be able to see here. This is where we were. You'll notice we were trading at 109 and change. Folks, we went all the way down to hit 104.50. And that on that long-term chart, and I'm going to find it here because it's very important to take a look at this long-term chart here in the dollar yen because it's something that will tell us that we should be uh, at a level that is going to be very, very important. So bear with me now. I'm just searching for the number, and when I get it, I'm going to bring it up so that you'll be able to see it without too much trouble. And if I don't have it, that means somebody came in here and took it away from me in the middle of the night, and that would make me very unhappy. Well, shucks. Anyway, uh, let me just try to go through these one at a time because here's what really happened here. Here is the British pound. It dropped 250 pips during this thing. Okay, hold on one second. It went all the way down and made a new low and, and immediately bounced 150 pips. The dollar index did very, very little. It went down, if you remember that really strong support we were looking at in the dollar at 95 uh 95.20. We held that, and it didn't go back, and all it did was rally a little bit. I think the chart fairy took it, David. You're absolutely correct. You know, I, I do these in the middle of the night when I can't sleep, and then when I get up in the morning, they disappear on me, and I don't understand why, but unfortunately, uh, that's what happened. But that move in the dollar-yen went from 109 down to 104.25, and that 104.25, uh, I've got to get this chart for you. I might have to put it out on the... Uh, 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 at the break because it's really it describes what really happened because uh, it, it basically was a, a raid and I believe it was done by the Bank of Japan starting it. They started it late in the afternoon just when Asia was getting ready to open and the markets are extremely thin and they came in and started to hammer it. As soon as the yen moved, the euro moved. The euro had already been moving down but then the pound started to break really bad. Then the Australian dollar broke. I'm short the Canadian dollar, and I'm I'm not in the office because I had to take the kids uh, for a little uh, thing before they leave. But the the main thing was is that uh, the Canadian dollar actually worked. That we shorted that. It's got 150 pip profit in it in the middle of a of a real big break here. So this is a good sign for that Canadian dollar. You know that thing just acted, uh, you know, just really nicely. Now I don't know if it's going to continue that or not, but uh, at least it started in the right direction. It was a, a really beautiful pattern set up on the weekly chart and then on the dailies. Um, uh, why should I check my mute, my mute button, uh, Terry? Is something wrong? Uh-oh. 10-4. Let's double check the sound here. Someone's saying they can't hear. Uh, boy, if that's the case, I've been talking to myself, so we'll see. Uh, let's get that broadsword to Danny Boy, broadsword to Danny Boy. Come here, Danny Boy. The chicken is in the pot. The eagle has landed. Okay, we're all right. Let's move on here to the next one here. Okay, uh, but anyway, if you remember, uh, those of you that get the newsletter, we focused on the fact that sometime, most sometimes, more than often, you have some really major moves in the currency starting around uh, January the 1st, and in that first week in January, and I believe this was the start of it. I, from what they're saying in the news, and I don't believe too much of these dudes because they have a tendency to uh, you know, not do as much as they say, but they say this is related to the Bank of Japan, but you know, we'll have to wait and see. 877-927-6648. Coming up is that Japanese yen chart, hopefully. Wow. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz order page at tfnn.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I've posted the Japanese yen, U.S. dollar. Uh, you'll see here, uh, as you see this going down, here, this basically means that the yen is rallying against the dollar. This chart is backwards because of the way that Ensign <laughs> puts it out, but that's okay. You can, it, it's, this is the way that it's traded at the Merck. Anyway, you'll notice all of the 61% retracements that you see here on this weekly chart. Uh, the last one we had was, of course, in September when we had that big three drive pattern right up at the 61% retracement. Uh, that was the fourth time that we had hit that level over the past several years. And then the break that we had last night, in, in the midst of this terrible panic, it stops exactly at 104.90. You know, folks, that means that there had to be one large order setting in there. Now, some of these trades are done by computers. I'm sure they are. But what happens is the computer starts going down and keeps selling, selling, selling. And all of a sudden, the... Uh, the computer gets absorbed by somebody in there that has a major buy order at one time, then you have something to really, uh, really work on. And remember that time of the day that things were relatively minor. Those of you that have enjoyed the the uh, the uh, little uh, YouTube video, it's actually a movie, I guess, of Tudor Jones when he first started uh, trading back in 1986, 87, I think it came out. It was called A Trader, and it was pulled off the air just as – you know, if you paid uh, $50 for it, they offered you your money back plus 50 bucks uh, just to get the tape back. Unfortunately, it got out. It was good that it got out because it showed a lot of things that were necessary. But but the main reason why the, the people that were backing uh, Tudor Jones who had it pulled was one of the first things that happened during the uh, – during the interview, if you remember, it was a Sunday morning in, in Virginia, and uh, Jones was there talking with the guy, and he wanted to do the Deutschmark. And so he did something like two or 300,000 uh, Deutschmark, which at that time on a Sunday night uh, with Europe just opening, it's very, very thin. And uh, he didn't quite get the order filled, and then he did a little bit of it, and he did some of it. But when he did that, people realized that he was putting great risk exposure at that time because if someone would go on the other side of that trade big time, you know, that market could have really gone against him. That was that was one of the things. Another thing in the 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 um, uh, web, I guess it was called a movie, I guess. But uh, another thing was the fact that he had those Bruce Willis 
uh, tennis shoes. Those were his things to ward off the bears in the market or, you know, with some type of a talisman. And another one, he had that dinosaur that he put on top of his uh, his computer uh, that was uh, that was real. There were a few other things, but I happened to be a friend of Peter Borsch, who was uh, in that movie. He was uh, uh, Tudor's uh, partner for a while, and of course he's on his own now. He works for the Merck. But uh, there were others that were there. But later on, this was 20-some years later, after he's extremely successful, uh, he's a big game, big game hunter, and he he bagged a white rhino. It's not uh, endangered or anything like that. And he had had the head mounted, and uh, he was putting it in his office in Manhattan, and it was on one of those spiral staircases. And they the workman got it up there, but the door to open the uh, the uh, his office was just uh, you know is really uh, uh, is really uh, it wasn't big enough to put through, and so. During that time, they had uh, Tudor Investment had one of its strongest runs, and that rhino sat on that floor for like three years before the darn thing was, uh, you know, we'll be able to see. Okay, someone's talking to us. Mr. Z is alerting us to the fact that uh, the Apple at 144 uh, will hold this decline. Frankly, Mr. Z, I think that it will because the market is not nearly as bearish as what the people are telling you. If we take a look at the banking index, uh, you know, that's one of the things. This is where money is flowing, folks, and the banking index held exactly where it should have held. I mean, it didn't go. In fact, if you just look at it, the banking index was closed on the high of the day yesterday with the Dow, you know, and these others that got hit really badly. So, it's held that level until that breaks down. I don't see any, you know, super major problems here. You know, we're having wild swings. You know, we 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 went to think 130 or 140 points in the S&P, down 70, up 70. I mean, it's uh, it's wild out there. But you know, it's following the numbers. I mean, it's there's nothing uh, mysterious about it. But I don't. I think Apple's going to hold. Uh, the Nasdaq has not broken down very much. I mean, all of these are still substantially above. Uh, the 382 retracement after the after that big bottom was made, you know that's uh, you know one of the things that I'm sort of keeping an eye on. And until that gets below that uh, 27, uh, uh, 24, uh, 10, 2400 level, it, it still looks okay to me. I mean, just because it has these wild swings, I mean we're in a different area. That's why you want to have some uh, you know volatility index, and we've been saying that for months and months now. That's my two cents, and, you know, you pay for it, what you get, two cents. Maybe it's overpriced. I don't know. Another one that, that looks if, – if, here's, here's one of the things that I do each weekend, and uh, if you'll take a look, that's right. It, that's very low, that, that 618 or the 2016 low. That's very, very close. But take a look here uh, at the, uh, the Hang Seng Hang – Sing, <laughs> the Hang Seng Index. It had a big move down, and then it consolidated yesterday. So it stopped right at that 78% level. That's the big ABCD. That was the target of this move down. Stopped right there. It's had two quiet days now, so that's all good. And now this could all this could all end badly, but right now it just doesn't look. And folks, I am. There's nobody more bearish than me longer term, but shorter term, it doesn't look that bad to me. It really doesn't. You add the banking index to it, and if you start taking – here, like Twentyman said, defy human nature. Do the work yourself. Go take a look at the FXI. Go take a look at the emerging market. Go take a look at, uh, well, even the DAX and the uh, – the uh, the FTSE they're not you know they're not in any really uh, you know cascading to the downside they're normal corrections that's what it looks like you know from a chart point but I'm not doing anything with uh, you know with fundamentals of course because I I don't follow that kind of stuff but it still looks that way to me uh, you know could be wrong but you know I'm looking for a rally into early February you know whether that can happen or not you know we'll have to wait and see but right now we just didn't. Uh, we, I just don't see that much bearishness. You know, Apple, I mean, look how much people, how many people lost on Apple that bought that thing up around when it was a trillion-dollar company at whatever it was, 280 or whatever it was. I mean, and Apple is not a tech company, folks. It's a marketing company. Uh, I've heard several people debate this, and it really uh, is a big deal. So we'll see uh, see what's happened. You know, Buffett has bought a lot of Apple right near the highs, but you know, Buffett is, uh, you know, he's in a he's in a world of his own. You can't you can't dispute uh, his success because he has a great he has a great long term perspective and he's really a terrific 
a picker of stocks. Plus, he's got Charlie Munger, who's a really uh, genius at this kind of stuff. So that's another thing that looks really interesting. We got a, a few um, bucks to pay for uh, some. Uh, what do we call the? Um, uh, uh, advertising. And when we get back from that, we're going to talk about the uh, treasury bonds just to see what's going on, because they were affected by this flight to quality when everybody was panicking in the currency markets during that uh, two hour period late last night. We'll cover that when we uh, when we come back from the break. And I want to talk just a tiny bit about uh, uh, some commodities that we're looking at and especially uh, the silver market. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help Help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24/7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee with nothing to risk. Sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24/7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and as a Happy New Year present to everyone, we have Norman, who calls it by the minute, Winsky on the line. Norm, how are you? Happy New Year. Shana Tova. Happy New Year, Larry. Thanks Happy for having New me Year on your you. show. Good morning. Go ahead, my friend. You've got the mic. All right. I, hopefully everybody can see my notes on the screen. I'm going to review what uh, I said back on the 20th of December when I was last on your show just ahead of a full moon and the solstice uh, that weekend. 
and they uh, lined up, and we I thought they'd be a big thing. That's if you're a student of Gann, that was always a two of the big things, Mr. Gann, the Celsius points, and then the fact that the, the moon was lined up, well, it sounded like it would be uh, pretty important. Well, we shall see. It's not the not really at the top of my uh, power totem pole for the planetary things, but we'll we'll see how it worked out. Okay, we had three, three uh, sort of a three-way cluster of uh, events there right around that weekend. Going into the weekend, uh, let's see, the night of the 19th, we had Jupiter at 45 to Pluto in Capricorn, looking for a moderate change in trend for cocoa, coffee, hogs, stocks, D-bonds. Uh, the night of the 20th, we had Jupiter at 135 to the U.S. year Mercury. That's the natal chart for the for the uh, for the U.S. And we'd be looking for a moderate change in trend for stocks, T-bonds, and U.S. dollar. And, of course, after Friday night, after the close of that weekend, we had the full moon in Cancer and the Capricorn of Celsius. Uh, we're looking for an important change in trend for coffee, corn, uh, Forex, gold, OJ, soybeans, silver, stocks, T-bonds, and wheat. So let's look at the charts. Here's your S&P chart there. And here's the... Uh, we made our bot. Well, we had a little panic there on the uh, in uh, the Monday that came right after that on the 20th, Christmas Eve on the 24th. The actual low though didn't occur until the I believe until maybe the next morning on the uh, after Christmas there. So that went that took uh, a little bit longer than uh, than uh, maybe it should have. You know, took uh, okay. Here's your T bonds. They made a top there on the 19th. And then made a nice low right on the uh, 20, uh, 20, uh, 21, and 24th there, you know. So that one, the bonds actually worked better than the stocks did. Here's your dollar index. It made a low there on the, I think, uh, yeah, made a low on the 19th. And then the next date didn't work out so well. It just kind of went into a sideways consolidation. We're looking for extremes, and that didn't uh, work out so well. All right, here's your cocoa. Made a nice little one to two day top there. Uh, pulled back 80 points from that point there. So that was worth about $800, I believe. Here's your co coffee. Uh, did uh, somewhat, somewhat made a little top there, and you had a chance to make a couple of handles on coffee. It's worth about $750. And there's your corn. It also made a little short term top there. And then had a pull back for, let's see, about 80, 76, 80, looks like maybe about uh, five, six cents, some small, small money there. <laughs> and the beans didn't really cooperate. They didn't bottom until way into the, uh, about the 27th or so, so the date was not effective on the beans. Here's the wheat. Wheat did not cooperate also. It just continued lower, so you would have taken a small loss there. Here's the euro. Euro did uh, make a low right about the, well, uh, the 20, we had the currencies, so we had the, uh, if you allow for a little, a little extra time, because, you know, Christmas Eve was only a half a day, then if we allow that to go into the 27th, then uh, you could, can't possibly count that for the euro. Uh, gold did not uh, cooperate. Uh, silver had uh, went into a consolidation and had a breakout right there on Christmas Eve and then, then went higher. All right, here's my version of the, uh, a lot of people are, uh, you know, longer term have uh, sort of, I don't know, thrown up their hands about trying to do a Bradley style model. I've, uh, I loved when I ran across Donald Bradley's book back in 1971. I liked his concept, loved his concept. It changed my life. I found that book in a bookstore in Terre Haute, Indiana, down by where you lived, the Honey Creek Square. Honey Creek there, Square, there. you got it. The Crocs <laughs> and Matanos there at the shopping center. And I found that book uh, all by itself on a bottom shelf by the floor. And I picked it up, and it looked like what I was looking for. Opened up the cover, and the inside page had it marked a dollar, and they struck out the dollar and marked it down to 10 cents, Larry. Wow, <laughs> so that's one of the greatest miracles of my life to find that book, you know. Anyway, so uh, I didn't like his parameters in there at all, and he used some planets, didn't use other planets. He had very wide, uh, you know, orbs, as we say, you know, in astrology and so forth. So I basically redid the whole thing. 
And here's how that worked out for December. So the blue line, I do these weeks in advance. There's the blue line was the forecast. The black line is the S&P 510 minute bar chart. And until we got super oversold here over right around Christmas time, and which I fledged, as you know, Larry, I sent out an, a rare a rare buy signal on my sentiment indicator call, I call the now index. Uh, then I was uh, you know was following this line pretty well. All right. All right, there's your days across the, the month there, starting on the 3rd of December all the way through the 28th. So that worked, I think that worked out fairly well, you know. All righty, now we're moving ahead. Oh, wow, we're going fast here. Now we're going to look into the future and see what's coming up this weekend. It's huge, Larry, huge. And so we have a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, and uh, we'll be getting to our top headliners in a minute. Uh, let's see, just to be thorough, though, let's see, Friday Friday afternoon, we had Jupiter 45 to the U.S. Pluto. That's be a moderate change in trend for stocks, T-bonds, and the U.S. dollar. And then after the close of Friday the 4th, uh, we had Jupiter 150, the U.S. Sun, against a moderate change in trend for the U.S. stocks, T-bonds, and the U.S. dollar. Uh, uh, into the weekend, we have a, he, he, this is a biggie here, a heliocentric Saturn. Contraparallel, it's a stressful uh, alignment with Uranus. That's a major change in trend for your coffee, copper, and stocks. And then the, over the weekend, we have a solar eclipse in Capricorn. And, of course, Capricorn is associated with coffee. And also, we round up the usual suspects for a solar eclipse. is a special kind of new moon. So we'll round up our usual suspects, corn, forex, gold. Oil, OJ, silver, soybean stocks, T bonds, and wheat. And then we also have Venus at its maxima elongation west. And so we'll look at our Venus markets, which are cattle, copper, cotton, stock, sugar, and wheat. And then we have Uranus turning direct. Now, Larry, you know, one of my top things are when the planets turn direct or retrograde. And the only thing better than that is if they line up with some big lunar effect or other lunar uh, event or some other big planetary event. And that's what we have. We have a solar eclipse lined up with the Uranus turning direct. So we want to look at the markets that might be affected by that, and that would be Uranus is copper. And, of course, the stock market is always involved. Uh, about a year ago, I was on your show in late December of 2017. Norm, hold that thought. We've got to pay a few bills. The music sure. is on. We'll be right back. Norm All Winsky right. of Astro Trend. Stay with us, please. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank and get the type of interest they receive instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per billable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot ranged from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. 
Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, brought to you by Nadex, next on TFNN. All right, folks, we're back with Norm Winsky of AstroTrend. Norm, we have a question from one of our listeners. Is, is there anything astrological that would make the defensive stocks so weak at the present time, or is that just a market condition? I don't know anything about that. Okay, move <laughs> on. Don't know what they mean by defensive stocks and. Well, you know, you know. something like uh, Lockheed and uh, you know Grumman oh, and all these other, you know, industry. yeah, I you know, you. yeah. There's because there's two ways to look at that. There's uh, you know defensive stocks like you're uh, uh, trying to avoid losing money type stocks. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a low beta, whatever you call that. Uh, you know, what I'm sure. talking about. Yeah, or or defense industry stocks, you know, right there you go. Anyway, I don't, I don't you know. Well, that that would be uh, the U.S. Uh, when you get to uh, aspects of the U.S. NATO chart that could be affected, you know. But I don't see anything specifically right now, you know. Okay, continue. All right. So anyway, we we're talking about Uranus turning uh, direct this weekend, and uh, we had something similar happen late December of 2017. I was on your show, Copper had gone straight up for like three weeks. It was way overbought. I came on your show and said, watch out for copper topping here with Uranus turning direct. And that turned out to be a, a huge top of copper. I don't think it ever went at that high uh, since then. So uh, I had a big down and uh, that was a great turn in copper. So there you go. So if you're a copper trader, pay attention to that. Uh, and then we have Uranus uh, uh, stressfully lining up with the US Uranus. That could something to do with uh, possibly with the military and the technology, U.S. stocks, T-bonds, and the U.S. dollar with an emphasis on technology and trade. All right, so now we're going to look ahead at some of these markets I've mentioned here. There's your shopping list for the weekend. And we're going to look at cattle. There's your cattle. We're looking for these markets to get to an extreme. you got your shopping list there. If a market gets to an extreme, hopefully, ideally, at the top or bottom of its trading channel, then that's a possible trading opportunity for you. The cattle right now is in the middle of its trading range, so we don't know yet. Maybe by tomorrow. I've been on your show many, many times, Larry, and I go, oh, this market's in the whatever market I was looking at. Uh, it's in the middle of the range. I don't know what to do. And the next day it has a huge move, and bingo, bango, we're at the, some extreme, and there was a great trading opportunity. So you got to pay attention to these. So there's cattle kind of taking a nap there, up dozing the the bulls are dozing in the middle of the range. Uh, cotton is kind of interesting. Uh, it's been going down, down, down. This, if this were to continue lower into the weekend, that could be uh, could be setting up a great uh, buying opportunity. Mm -hmm. There's your copper. Copper has been going down, so that also could be setting up for a nice buy here in a, into the weekend. You don't know later than these things. If they're going to turn, should turn no later than Monday's opening. Here's the sugar. It's also been pulling back. It's scraping the bottom of its channel. And that's, uh, and of course, we'll be looking for some extreme, of course, in the stock market, which we already looked at. 
and uh, that's uh, that's kind of your shopping list there. You know, you got your grains, your okay. forex, your precious metals, any of these markets that are get to an extreme by the weekend. Look for a change in trend. Okay. I think you mentioned you thought gold was getting close to a top, right, Larry? Yeah, uh, Norm, we have a question from one of our listeners, and that is about the January 20th full moon. I know that's a you know a few weeks out, but you'll probably come on right before that, I would guess, right? Maybe on I the hope, 19th? I hope, I hope you'll let me come on. Let, yeah, well, well, we'll schedule you for the 19th. How's that? Is that a, is that a, a trading day? Let me see. This is the third 19th. Yeah, that would be a trading day, so we should well, be okay. 19th, that's, that's a Saturday, Larry. Well, we'll have you on Saturday. There won't be anybody listening, but it'll be a good show. How about but we you have you on, have... on Thursday? Have you on Thursday the 18th? Well, something like that. Anyway, so yeah. that's obviously, uh, there's one more big window coming before that, and that's one of my other top things are when the planets get to zero latitude. By the way, we just had one of these on the night after the after the close of, the, of December 31, Go look at your futures charts. The high so far this year, it was on January 1 on the Globex trading on the futures. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see, that's 25.21 was the high on the futures. We had a retest yesterday within $1 of that price before mm -hmm. we rolled over and went down. So here's, a, here's one of my principles. I hammer over and over again. This is huge. This is revolutionary. This is huge. Write it down. The key times give you the key prices. Gan said time is more important than price. So if you know when these key events, uh, time events are going to occur, you look at your charts. So they that will give you the key resistance and support levels. Uh, back in early December, we had the full moon, no new moon, uh, with Mercury turning direct. Uh, we did get a temporary bottom there on the Monday the 10th, uh, but they came kind of late, and that was a warning that that bottom could ta be taken out later. And boy, when that got taken out, that that's when we went into the waterfall decline. So mm -hmm. you got to pay attention. Even when these things look like they failed, they're telling you something. The market's always talking to you. So when you, you take out one of these levels here, it could be bigger than the turn you were looking for, you know? So that's why you have to use stops and have good money management, you know? All right. All righty, I think uh, I think about it covered. Any questions, Larry, or from the den there? Or? I think that's pretty good. We've answered the question so far. Um, uh, you want to tell us how the folks can uh, reach you? Sure. Here we go. Please contact me. At uh, I'm in Naples, Florida. Here's my phone. Although at the moment my phone service is out, but they expect them here any minute now. And there's two three nine five nine four three nine three nine. You can call me on Skype at norm.winski, it's N-O-R-M dot W-I-N-S-K-I, or email me at nwinski at embarkmail.com. I do only do, I do, I give a free, I have, offer classes in the beginning of each month. Uh, we got a few more days to go, so if you call me right away, we might be able to squeeze you in here in the next few days or early next week, and then we'll get you all trained and ready to go to take advantage of these big, big moves I'm expecting here. In the coming month, to answer the question, we I didn't really answer the question there about the uh, well, what's the date again? Oh yeah, the 21st. We have a full moon lunar eclipse, a super lunar eclipse. That's when you get it takes three things to get that. You have to have the full moon, then you have to have the special full moon where you get the lunar eclipse, and then you have to have the uh, the moon at perigee when it's at its closest point. So you get all those lined up. Does it not happen very often? And uh, but that's going to be happening on the Monday, the 21st, which uh, unfortunately that's a holiday, so a market holiday. So I don't know if that's going to be uh, how effective that's going to be. Usually, when we get lunar eclipses on off days, you know, non market days, uh, then that somewhat tends that tends somewhat to dissipate that energy, you know. Otherwise, we had a last one I remember, a super lunar eclipse occurred on Sunday night, September the 27th, 2015, uh, yeah, 2015, that's right, and uh, we, the market closed up on Friday, we came in that Monday morning, and the Dow gapped down over 300 points, that was a big surprise to a lot of people, I told people that it was going to be a super lunar eclipse, and look out below, you know, it's usually a good one-day whack for the stock market, the stock market does not like lunar eclipses so there you go i'll be uh, coming back but you want to get a hold of me because we got another after this weekend which is huge 
we got another big event coming up around the 15th when Mars gets to zero latitude. And then, of course, the uh, the big one there with the super lunar eclipse on the 21st. Mm -hmm. So we got lots of big stuff going on here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, can, I, can, I can fix your phone problem, Norm. Pay the bill. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year to you, my friend. Thank you very much. Get back. The secret to being successful in trading and investing is to have an untiring, undying, and unquenchable thirst for knowledge. There are certain situations where you can absolutely understand what the next move of the buyers and sellers is likely to be, or what I like to call a competitive advantage. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in bonds, and on Tuesday, January 8th, I'm going to teach subscribers of Mastering Probability how to use Tom DeMarc's setup nine count and trend lines a tool that called for a change in trend at 3.30 in the morning on the day that generated the Dow's largest daily point gain in history. If you're looking for a competitive edge, then now is the time to take advantage of my risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee trial for my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability, which will provide you with immediate access to this live workshop, which will be archived on your members page for the next 30 days. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Sign up today at TFNN.com. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, I posted the chart of the Treasury bonds to show you that uh, we have gone to that area, uh, which matched the old high. We're also equal move from where we were uh, last fall when we had a pretty good rally. I know there's a lot of talk about the panic and flight to quality, but that's like inviting an arsonist to uh, put out the fire. In my opinion, it doesn't look very good uh, from a long-term perspective in the Treasury bonds. If we look at them on a little bit shorter time frame, say over the last several weeks, you can see here that we are making a uh, three drive to a top pattern, the high from uh, December 9th to the high of the 19th and the 19th to yesterday was equal. We have the ABCD pattern coming in there at 147.26. And on the weekly chart, our, we expected that rally to possibly get to that 147 level. And we got a little bit above it uh, because of the panic that went on in Japan uh, yesterday. So we'll see uh, how these things come out. Also, uh, we talked about earlier today, uh, to pay attention to 20 minutes and say, do the work yourself. Take a look at those foreign markets, especially the Asian markets. Uh, they don't look nearly as bad as the news is telling you. It really isn't, even considering what's happening with Apple. 
So, uh, you know, the market will go on with or without Apple, that's for sure. But uh, pay attention. It just doesn't look nearly as bad. We're selling off today after a little bit of a rally, but there should be support coming in at around the 27.65 level if it's going to be good. If we get below 27.50, then we got a chance. 20, let's try it again. 24.65. We get below 24.50. We would be looking at possible that major test at 2410. And this is uh, going to be interesting because we only have one more uh, day to go in this week. But the big news, of course, was what happened in that foreign exchange market yesterday. Those were major bottoms put in, folks. Uh, we, we make any moves below those. Uh, we're looking at some real serious things happening. I'll be covering that in the in the newsletter this weekend because it's very important to watch how money's flowing and cash and stuff like that. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks!